The Razer Blade Advanced model has been my daily driver for roughly the past two years. It's a great laptop, but it's not without its flaws. Most noteworthy, its battery has a tendency to swell, which can cause a whole host of problems. However, even though it has some shortcomings, this laptop remains one of the most powerful and thin laptops that allows you to upgrade its components. So today I'll be showing you how to replace the Razer Blade's battery, upgrade its RAM, and switch out its SSD. Let's take a look. Welcome to Top Spec, your one-stop shop for tech content. If you're watching this video, that likely means you only need one of the three things I'm going to be explaining today, but there is going to be some valuable information in this intro portion, so finish this out and then use the section feature in YouTube to scrub to wherever you want to go. Anyways, regardless of why you're here, you're going to need to open up the back of your laptop, which means that you're going to need some tools. The only two things that you should need are a T5 Torx screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver if you want to replace the SSD. Chances are you should have a Phillips head screwdriver lying around, but most of you probably don't have a T5 screwdriver, so you can pick one up on Amazon for under $5, but the one that we used in this video was one from a kit from iFixit. You also may want to consider picking up a can of compressed air, since it is inevitable that dust will build up inside of your computer. My blade was only two years old and its fans were full of it. Anyways, step one is to shut down your PC, and then use the T5 Torx screwdriver to remove the back panel. The order you remove these screws doesn't really matter, just be sure to not lose track of them because they're extremely easy to lose. I recommend putting them in a little Ziploc baggie. As soon as you've removed all of these screws, the back panel should lift off with no force. Just make sure to be gentle so you don't damage any of the internal components. Now that the back panel is removed, lift up the Lego-like connector that attaches the blade's battery to its motherboard, and then feel free to skip to whatever section of this video you'd like to. The battery in my blade was so swollen that it was actually interfering with the way the touchpad felt and functioned. If you're watching this, you're likely in the same boat as me, so allow me to give you a recommendation for which battery you should buy to replace it. The one I purchased was from Amazon from a company called ZTHY, uh, and it appears to be a one-to-one -one clone with the original, except for some subtle differences with the connector. So far, it's worked great and has actually provided better battery life than my original battery ever had, but if anything changes or goes haywire, I'll be sure to leave a pinned comment down below. Anyways, to remove the battery, use a screwdriver to gently remove all these screws holding it in place and then lift it out of the laptop. Again, place these screws somewhere safe, then get your new battery, place it in, plug in the connector, and then screw it in. Depending on the battery you get, you may have to do these same actions in a different order, just because it might be more difficult to screw in the battery while it's plugged in or vice versa, be the judge of your own actions. Also, don't worry if you don't feel these screws line up perfectly, as long as you push the battery down and seat it in properly and don't over tighten anything, you should be fine. From here, you're essentially done, so put the backplate back on and try booting it up. If you have issues, check to make sure that the connector is properly seated. Also, your battery should have been factory calibrated, but it's good practice to allow it to drop down to about 10% and then charge it up to 90% before normal use. This will allow it to go through a full cycle and let Windows give you a more accurate representation of your remaining battery life. Upgrading the RAM is the most difficult repair mentioned in this video because there is a delicate ribbon cable covering one of the SODIMs. You'll have to unplug this before doing anything, and I actually had to get Chris's help because this is my first time dealing with ribbon cables and I have fairly shaky hands. Essentially, you'll need to pull back a piece of tape, pull the retention arm back, and then you should be able to pull the cable out with a little bit of force, but not too much. Now you should have access to both sticks of memory, which you can remove by pushing outwards on the two arms holding them in place. Once removed, you can insert your new RAM into the socket by gently pushing it in and then locking it in place with the arms. Also, the process with both sticks is identical, they're just on opposing sides. From here, you're essentially done, put the back panel back on, screw it in place, and try booting into Windows. When you get into Windows, I'd suggest going into System Information and checking the installed physical memory to ensure that the amount of RAM you have installed shows up here. In my case, I installed 32GB, so 32GB should appear here. By the way, if you'd like a link to the RAM I used, link down in the description. I've saved the easiest repair for last, but this one does require a little bit of forethought. There's no simple way to transfer all of your files to a new disk with Windows in my opinion, 
So you'll either need to back up all of your files to an external hard drive or get some sort of M2 NVMe enclosure. You'll also need a USB flash drive to boot Windows off of, so use the Windows Media Creation tool to create a bootable Windows instance. It's really easy to do, but if you need further clarification, I've left a link down below to a video guide. Once you have everything together, use the Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screw holding down the original SSD in place, pull out the drive, put the new drive in the socket, and then screw it in place. Now you can put the backplate on, screw it in place, plug in your Windows USB, and boot up your laptop. While it's turning on, press the delete key to navigate to your system's BIOS settings. Here you'll need to change your default boot device to your Windows USB, and then save changes and restart and it should boot into your Windows installation media. I'm not going to walk you through that since there's nothing particularly special about it, just make sure that you hit custom installation and not express, because you will want to install on your SSD. Once you're in Windows, you'll need to re-download any drivers that you were missing and you should be good to go. As I mentioned earlier, I'd recommend using some compressed air to blow away some of the dust that has built up within your laptop. Most of this should gravitate around your fans, but it really could be anywhere, so be sure to look around. Hold the can while using it and spray in short bursts. If your fans look like they are full of dust, I'd recommend removing them just by unscrewing them and then lifting them up, holding the fan blades in place and blowing the air through them. If you decide to remove the fan on the right, be sure to be conscious of the network card's cable, which is run through the fan's housing. You may need to unplug it entirely, but either way, just be extremely careful because it does appear to be delicate. Either way, when you're done with the fans, just screw them back in place and you should be good. That concludes this video though. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment and links to all of the products that I used in this video down below. By the way, another common problem with the Blade 15 is its blue screening, which I already made a video on. So if you're experiencing that, be sure to check out that video. As always though, I'm Aaron and we'll see you next week.